Hello, my name is Chris. Um, I'm going to kind of be going through and going over uh, TypeScript and design patterns. This is just um, kind of a video, or hopefully videos, of different um, ways to implement these design patterns using TypeScript. Um, just as a poor warning, these videos aren't like going to be super in-depth into the benefits, consequences, when you might use these. Um, design patterns because there's just so many different resources available out there. Um, so many books, uh, YouTubers, videos that I've personally used. And so I decided to just kind of include that in the description. So if you needed like more in-depth analysis, you wanted to get more information on the those design patterns, whatever, whichever one I'm covering, um, definitely check out that information. And with that out of the way, uh, let's just get right into it. Okay, so looking at this, this is just a payment system that we have in our web application. This isn't too complex. I just kind of made this up in like, I don't know, 30 minutes. And so I, I created this to kind of emulate and show that we have this, these different systems at play. And each of these payments are using a different uh, concrete implementation or algorithm, or there's something going on behind the scenes that we're not quite sure of. But in a sense, they're all doing the same exact thing. They're all being used for payment. And so if we kind of understand this, we're kind of getting closer to understanding why we use the strategy pattern as well. And uh, before I go on to the next step, a big key component of the strategy pattern that we kind of have to understand as well is that each of these are from three different independent entities. So we have the credit card, PayPal, and bank account, but it's very important to kind of conceptualize or understand that these are completely independent from one another. They're only shared in the same behavior that they're trying to perform. And in that, I'll kind of go into the code. And so the code here, um, all of these different design patterns, they're going to kind of code from a interface. Um, and a big reason for that is kind of coding towards uh, composition versus inheritance. If that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'll probably go more into detail in the future. Maybe I'll we'll make a video on it, but um, we're understanding that in a way we have a payment that we're trying to implement, and this payment will take a user. And just without going on to this whole tangent, a big reason why we code this way without having maybe some primitive um, types like string or other things of that nature is because we're kind of coupling this relationship between the payment, which requires a user, and later in a bit, we'll also see that the user has its own payment uh, function as well that requires a payment as well. So there's this relationship that we're kind of building in our code that can kind of help maybe other people understand the connection between two as well without having to go into detail explaining the nuances between um, the two entities or objects. So going into our different um, concrete implementations of payment, we see we have the credit card here. We have PayPal here and we have the bank here. But we'll also notice that they're very different from one another. They have their own instance variables, they have their own functions, but what they do share in is that they all implement this payment. And so that's kind of what the strategy pattern is built on. Different concrete implementations on the same behavior and we're also using encapsulation to kind of put all of this information into where it needs to be, kind of separating logic. And this kind of separates and kind of prevents all the code from muddling up together. We also have a user here. Um, and then in our system, the user could be anything for your purpose or your application could be something else. But in terms of, um, these books and these videos that I'm seeing, they might call this the context. And what we use the context for in terms of the strategy is we're creating this connection to the strategy, to the context. These strategies 
are connecting to the context in some way. And that's why we have to have these different implementations to kind of separate the different ways that um, this strategy or this payment can be performed on the user. And again, this user will also use this payment as well. So we're kind of coupling and creating this relationship between these two objects. And so once we do that as well, we're able to kind of, in a way, eliminate conditionals. Because when we look at how these event listeners are being created, it just I just create the object into this paid class, which takes a payment here, and it uses, calls upon the user payment here. And so it calls the get amount from the user. Once I do this, I'm not muddling up my code with all of this extra types specifying if it's this payment, do this payment, if this string is, uh, if this is called bank, do this. Um, I'm coding more towards the abstraction of the payment rather than coding to the payment itself. A big reason why I perform this sort of abstraction is because in the future, if I added more payments to this application or to this class, we can sort we can create even more payments without having to recode and refix our entire application. Because all that we know is that all that we really have to know is that um, we need to perform the code for the payment here. And in the same sense, we might have to know the relationship between the user. Like if there's a new payment, let's say for example, um, like crypto, crypto payment implements payment, then we always know that it's gonna take a user and it needs to validate some data. But maybe for this, in a sense, maybe this one might have both the password, um, which is like steal, and it might need also the security code as well. And so from this, for the payment to process through, we might have to validate both both the password and and the security code. Um, to return some value. And that took pretty much no time at all. So coding to the strategy pattern, a big proponent of this, um, oh, sorry, TypeScript is being crazy. Um, a big reason why we code to this strategy pattern is understanding that um, it helps us with sort of creating new classes and new payments without muddling up our code. And in another way, we're able to sort of code to this abstraction to this interface. And since we're using the interface within these functions like paid here, classes can take on a numerous amount of interfaces but can only take on one parent class if it was working through inheritance. And so if we know that every implementation of payment will have its own pay function here, then in a sense, we're able to continue expanding out our application and we can create more and more payments um, much easier than without restructuring our entire code. Oh, and another very important part of this strategy pattern is kind of understanding how it interfaces with the uh, context, or in this case, the user. So from here, I have the user does have this 
Um, through its constructor, it has the amount, the security code, and password. And it's able to kind of work together with the payment to kind of perform uh, the different payments here. Um, so we know that it's able to perform those payments. But um, let's say, for example, you wanted this, you wanted to make it different or you wanted to, you know, change it depending on what the user value is. Once I do that, then you notice that it doesn't work with the credit card. And that's because the user here, it has to validate the security code here and it's preset on a specific security code. And the same goes for, um, the same would go for this here. If I change this to just S, um, then you notice that the bank account doesn't work. The other ones would work, but this one is kind of stuck. And that's kind of, that's kind of essentially, you know, I feel like that can be used more in maybe game programming or if your application is dynamic and you have a lot of different strategies that are interfacing with the context and you wanted to be able to uh, specify that, okay, like um, when this happens to use it, this is going to change the user um, password or it's going to change a Boolean. And if that Boolean is false, then don't act on that strategy. So you can create very complex relationships between the strategy and the context. Um, one very final important note as well is that we already instantiated and created this crypto payment here, but what if we wanted to create something like a no payment? And this is kind of important too, because there might be a situation where we might not want to do anything at all. Oh, it's not void. Oh, it has to be a number. Uh, okay, then we'll just have to return zero. All right. Um, or we might return user dot get amount. Um, okay. Uh, and so a big reason why we might implement this is so that we might have something in our system that we want to be able to not do anything at all, if that makes sense. Maybe that can be in some sort of game that maybe there is some sort of condition where um, nothing is supposed to occur once that be is being called. This is a little bit hard to conceptualize without actually having some reason for its implementation. And this makes more sense when you look closer at this sort of relationship here, because every payment will have to have some pay call to the user. And if it has to have that implementation, there could potentially be some reason or rationale that you don't want to do anything at all. And so when you understand that, then you may come across some very specific situation where you might say, hey, I actually don't want to have any payment here when it gets to this certain point. Or maybe there might be some process, maybe there's like a three-step process of validation or perhaps some sort of process of performing another complex payment or another complex um, process or structure in your application that you have to perform the payment, but there could be some very niche specific context where there will actually be no payment at all. And so, this can account for that situation as well. So yeah, that's my video on TypeScript and the strategy pattern. I'm going to include a link to the GitHub and also include um, links to, again, those books, YouTube videos that I found extremely helpful. But yeah, I hope that was 
super helpful. Um, you know, if you like this content, definitely comment, like, go to my Instagram, I'll include it in the description and just let me know that the, you know, what I'm doing is good and okay. I'm just starting out. So give me some, you know, don't, don't be too harsh on me, but yeah, hopefully in the future, these videos will be more polished and more developed. So again, thank you. I hope you guys have a nice one.